wheels. Probably one of the most fun upgrades you can do to your bike. And when upgrading TT bike wheels, you can go deep, really deep. Half a year ago, I bought these wheels, the Parkour's Disc and the Parkour's Chrono Max. The Disc is, well, a fully fared wheel and the Chrono Max is a whopping 83 mil deep section front wheel. Both designed to house a 28 millimeter tire rather than your old school 23 to 25 millimeters. Now, can they provide the holy grail of speed and comfort? There are three reasons why I bought these wheels specifically. That is design, price, and speed. Let's talk about design first. This is the category where I have the most to talk about. Probably most importantly, let's begin with the shape of the wheels. This wheel set is one of those rare gems that are actually making well-designed wheels for wider tires in my eyes, especially for the disc wheel as the width of the tire no longer matters at the back of the bike. The tires I have fitted here are, the, are recommended by Parkour's width of 28 millimeters and they are the GP5000 TT TR. They do size up to a measured 30 millimeters when on these wheels. Don't fret, however, as the wheels still fit in the rule of 105. If you don't know what this is, in short, it basically means that the wheel should be about 5% wider than the tire to maintain good airflow attachment over the wheel. If you look at this top-down view, you can see the wheel rim is still wider than the tire. This goes with the disc as well. Parkours are also suggesting if you want to, you can run a 30 millimeter tire, which will likely run at 32 millimeters, as this will have no aerodynamic penalty on their disc wheel. They don't recommend this for the front wheel though. Comfort. Because I live here in the UK, the ability to fit a wider tire really helps. It is more comfortable as I can run them at a lower PSI for the same skin pressure in the tire casing. I also think the wider tire does run faster over the rough surfaces which we have in abundance here in the UK. The comfort from the width of the tire really starts to show when you're doing longer distance triathlons such as middle and full distance. This helps you feel a little bit fresher for the run leg in the triathlon. The valve cover. It is just this little cover that's Velcroed on. Simple, but I don't know why all disc wheels don't come with something similar to this. I see way too many disc wheels nowadays with tape over the valve holes. This is a far superior and simple design that also looks much cleaner. Whilst I'm a fan of the valve cover, the valve opening space is too small to really get your fingers in there and do much in there at all. I can just about unscrew the Presta valve with my fingers and I now have to use and carry these mini pliers around with me that will fit in there if I ever want to remove the valve nuts. The space in here is also a bit too short. If I put a normal inner tube there, the standard length is too long plus a CO2 breaker. Even for a small one at that, like the Silka Eolo one that I carry. I do think this is something that they should consider for future additions of the wheel. More space to work in here. The lack of space of course means you will need a valve adapter to pump up your disc wheel. These wheels are tubeless compatible. A big thumbs up in my book for two reasons. The first is speed. Tubeless tires run as fast as latex, if not faster in some scenarios. The second is that if you do get a puncture, there is a chance that it will seal by itself, meaning that you won't have to stop and lose time during a race. I did find with the tubeless tires, I needed a charger pump to get these specific tires pumped up. It also comes with a setup kit such as valves and tubeless rim tape. I would have liked some short instructions with the tubeless, for example, did I need the tubeless rim tape for the rear wheel as there's no nipple holes around there? So I put the rim tape in anyway. Just small things like this would be good to know when you buy the wheels. The rim tape it came with as well, I didn't like. 
This is because I couldn't get it to seal. I ended up using a different brand. Now for some more interesting stuff. Stability and side winds. The first thing to remember is that I am a heavier rider at 83 kilos. So the wind affects me to a lesser degree. Parkours are also saying a disc reel is actually more stable from their testing at the moment. But this is early research at the time of filming this as far as I'm aware. With all of that being said, I feel these wheels are very stable in the wind. Let me explain how it feels when you are hit with a strong side wind. The best way I can actually describe these wheels is that you track really straight. And if you are hit from a side wind, it doesn't just tug you all of a sudden, it kind of eases you so you have lots of time to adjust to that side wind. Then when you're leaning into the side wind, if it suddenly stops, you don't jerk again, you kind of just pull back up straight and it just, these wheels just track really straight. That's the best way that I can describe them. I think this is due to a combination of the disc wheel combined with the more U-shaped front wheel design that are showing on their worth in crosswinds nowadays. If I were a lighter rider, say under 70, maybe 65 kilos, I would probably opt for the shallower chrono on the front rather than the chrono max that I have here. Exposed nipples. The trade-off for the minute aero penalty of exposed nipples is well worth it for the convenience they offer in terms of maintenance. Sound. The disc sounds like a disc wheel, which is to say, awesome. Everyone loves the whooshing of a disc wheel. You can particularly hear it when going past hedges or walls and it makes you feel really fast. We can't talk about sound without mentioning the free hub. I believe that they are using EZO48 tooth hub and it sounds great. Have a listen. The disc itself seems to amplify the sound as it resonates inside there. Really nice. Finally, on design, aesthetics. I'm just putting it out there. These wheels look amazing. Then combine them with this bike, it's like they were made for each other. The number of compliments I get on this setup going into triathlon transitions or signing up on time trials is very ego inflating. It looks as if the 30 millimeters fits in perfectly with the frame shape of my obeyer or do here. The gaps are minimal between the wheels and frame. Also, the edges seem to run together smoothly. The wheels themselves also offer a refined and tasteful set of decals which don't overly show off, but you can still clearly see who made them. They will suit any bike you put them on. If you want to go more extravagant, they do offer some custom colors on the decals and hubs. Wow, okay, after all of those subsections I've talked about, do I like the design of the wheels? It's an overall massive yes. All apart from two things. One, the small space to work with in the valve disc opening. And two, I think the front tire is too wide. I am going to get into this a bit more when I talk about the speed. Price. The disc wheel itself comes in at £1,049, then the front wheel comes in at £600. For these wheels and all of their quality features, it achieves this goal of being very price competitive. If you want to spend a bit more, they do have the option to upgrade to ceramic bearings for the wheels. For me, I have opted to save some pennies and I've bought the normal steel bearings. Let's get serious. My final category, speed. Are these wheels fast? Let me tell you some of the stats from the testing that I have done. From my testing, it shows they are a lot faster. Over a standard 10 mile time trial, the disc wheel alone is around 21 seconds faster and both the disc 
and front wheel are 33 seconds faster than the original 55 millimeter deep wheels that came with this bike. Then over a full Ironman, that equates to a ginormous four minutes for just the disc and six minutes and 15 seconds for the full wheel set. So yeah, they're faster. If you want to go deeper into the data that I have gathered, then there is a link below to a video where I show all of my testing and protocols. Right, so we know that they are faster, but there is one thing I would like to mention here. Earlier, I said I want to talk about the width of the front tire. I use these wheels for both time trial and triathlon of all distances. Now the 30 mil width on the back is perfect for both disciplines. The size of the frontal area doesn't matter back here. For the front wheel, however, it does. I think when approaching speeds of over 45 kilometers an hour, the 30 millimeter width is too wide and the tire could benefit from maintaining its original 28 millimeter width. This would make the front wheel much more appropriate for time trialing. For triathlon, where I usually average around the 35 to 40 kilometer an hour mark, then I think the 30 millimeter width is still suitable. I did actually ask Parkours if a 25 millimeter tire would be faster on the front. This tire would then measure at 27 millimeters on these wheels. They had this to say. If you don't want to read all of that, then basically it says in real world your angles, the airflow attachment to the wheel is better with a 28 millimeter tire. So I've stuck with it. So can I conclusively say that these wheels are faster? 100%. I think I would still like to see the front tire measure at its stated 28 millimeters though. This would make the wheel set more versatile for both time trial and triathlon. Last thing about these wheels on this video is the weigh-in. I don't have much experience with other disc wheels, so I don't know this, if this is heavy, light, or even in the middle. The disc wheel comes in at 1,235 grams and is 1,837 grams fully set up. I'm talking tires, sealant, tubers tape, cassette, and disc rotor, all of that jazz. The front wheel is 858 grams and 1,205 grams in its final setup. But honestly, I think weight is a completely irrelevant for a TT bike anyway. For those who are curious about the bike and how much it weighs now, it comes in at bang on 10 kilos in its final setup, including a full puncture repair set on the bottom of the box. To conclude, for my bike, these wheels are nearly perfect. I love their wider design, the wider tires make the bike noticeably more comfortable and they fit and suit my bike perfectly. Their price is also fantastic for what you get and most importantly, they're seriously fast wheels. The only two small gripes I have are the small space for the valve and the disc and the front tire blows out to 30 millimeters. Even though it still sits within the rule of 105, I think 30 millimeters is slightly too wide for the front wheel. If buying the disc alone, you can't go wrong here. If you have any other questions or stuff that you think that I have missed, then please put them in the comments below. If you want, you can also message me privately on Instagram over here and I'll happily get back to you there as well. Once again, if you wanna see my test data video on these wheels, then I'm gonna put that in the link below. This has been Cycling Unboxed. I've been Jason, I'll see you in the next video.